Hey, welcome back. Acro Critique video number six. I'm Jim Burke. Thanks for stopping by. It's been a little bit. I've been traveling. I was in Louisiana, then Arizona with my airplane, doing a little, a little bit of flying of my own. I did post a video. Take a look at it, and you can see what it looks like to fly uh, an unlimited sequence. I was flying the unlimited known down in Arizona for that video. And right now I'm looking at a video from David Farley out of the UK. David flies a Cap 231EX in the advanced category. Now this is the SIVA system over there. So they fly the advanced known, and that's what we're going to watch uh, David do. He's going to fly his advanced known for us. David said that he flies, he flew in the standard and intermediate categories with some success. He's moved up to advanced. He's trying to do a lot better in, in advanced. And he says maybe he'd even try unlimited, though he thinks he's getting too old. Let me tell you, David, I have a friend who flies. He's in his 80s. He flies unlimited. It's just, uh, it can be done. People can fly into their 60s and 70s. The nice thing about this sport, sort of like golf, is you can enjoy it into your older age. So don't let that stop you. But having said that, Unlimited's not for everybody, and that's okay too. Advance is a lot of fun. A lot of people enjoy Advance. So if you decide to stay there, more power to you. Let's take a look at the flying now. We're going to start with the WAGs. And I did watch this before, and uh, I did notice something right in the WAGs. It's kind of uh, in the theme, a thing that I notice in a lot of videos. I notice as a coach a lot. So I'm going to cover that right away during the WAGs. And that is basically that when you roll the airplane to knife edge and then beyond knife edge, so after that first bit of roll to knife edge all the way through to the other, other side, the down elevator must start coming in. And when you're knife edge, you generally will need some down elevator to keep the nose from drifting. And what I see in your, in your uh, wags is a little bit of drift. That's probably showing up in all of your rolls. So I want to make sure that the first thing we do is just point that out. Let's take a look. In fact, if we look over the nose during the wags, you'll see that the nose is sliding slightly to the left with every wag. So right there, that's going to require you to add a little right rudder after your wags to the left to kind of get back on the line. It's going to make you feel a little less confident. If you can get that right off the bat so that you're adding in the down elevator and keeping it in a little longer as you're rolling back to level, you'll be happier right away and you'll use that technique throughout all of your flying. So it'll help you everywhere. Okay, let's continue on now. Now David is nice enough to put the figures up in the upper left corner so we can see this first figure is a double Humpty. Pull to vertical looks good. I would say that in that pull, it looks like you're slowing down the rate of pull at the end as you near vertical. Let's try not to anticipate anything. Let's always just pull with gusto and then pop it to the line. It's going to look better. It's going to feel better. And it's going to give you more energy as you're going up the line when you have roll combinations to do. So here we are on the vertical line after a half roll. And now we should be pushing to vertical down. And right about here is when the rate of rotation has to increase in the push so that we don't end up closing low. So be aware of that. Okay, and on that pull there, after the half roll, what I notice is if we look over the, the nose, and I'll have to wait for the roll here, look over the nose at a point. I can see a point right here on the ground in this bit of dirt. I can see that the nose is occluding that or trying to occlude that, which means that the nose is not um, uh, pointed straight down. You're actually changing that line. Maybe you're anticipating or maybe you're just not giving enough forward pressure to counter the trim of the aircraft as it's accelerating. Be aware of that. We can probably see that later on as well if we keep watching. All right, now pull to vertical. This pull looks nice. Let's make sure we keep the pull going. Not too bad. I do see the that you're sticking the, the stick, but you are letting up on the Gs or letting up on the pressure on the stick force as you get near vertical. I can see that in the way that the, the plane is reaching that vertical line. So there's really, you know, two things can be happening there. One is just not paying enough attention. That's fine. The other one is you're thinking about, I've got to make sure I hit this vertical line. I've got to make it right. It's better just to pull and pop it to a line that's close to vertical than it is to wait and, you know, make that line perfect. It's not worth that much effort. You need the energy that you'll have if you just pop it to, to the line. Okay, enough of that. Let's move on. And now we'll be capping off and getting ready for the spin. I like that technique, stabbing the stick forward to start the, the, the push. It's always good because what you're doing is you're showing the judges a break so they can see that the line has ended and now the radius begins. I like that technique. Now the spin. Now we could have a little more time between that push from vertical and the spin. Maybe another second would be better. That seems a little rushed. And then during the spin, the spin entry, there's really almost no yaw rotation at all at the beginning. So here, let's look at here's our here's we're in our horizontal line, really only about a second and a half long. So it needs to be a little longer for sure. 
and then we watch the entry and the nose comes down without a lot of, of yaw. And then the rotation of the spin, what I see in that is it looks like, it, may, it could be the camera, but I don't think so. It looks like there might be some left aileron in that spin. I say that because it really looks like the center of rotation is not in front of you or in your, at your, where your body is, or right in front of your body, centered in the airplane. It really looks like the center of rotation is more over to the left, on your left side. If I just watch that again. And I don't know for sure, but I think probably what you're feeling in the cockpit is probably that you're being pushed out of the spin with your body. And that's a sign that you're not spinning um, around the center of gravity of the airplane enough. So maybe that's a clue, maybe not, but let's take a look here again. Nose comes down. And then, yeah, I really do feel like it's spinning uh, just slightly off to your left. And as far as the spin entry goes, if um, I think you'd be better off if you pushed the cap off a little earlier so you had a bit more energy, kept the nose higher, and then went ahead and drew a line that lasted a little longer. So when you get your spin entry in, it's not just like you're coming up, capping off, and then immediately going and sagging into the spin. Just go ahead and give yourself a little more energy on that vertical line. I think your spin entry will be better. Okay, so now after the spin, we now have a pull to a 45. Let's watch this line here. Now, I'm going to watch to see if this doesn't change while you're on the vertical line. Unless you're being pushed from beneath the airplane in this direction, this distance here should stay pretty constant as you're going down, right? But you can see that closes up. So that's another example of where the plane is just being allowed to pitch on that vertical line down. That does That is something a judge will see. Judges will hit that as, um, um, you know, a... Uh, a, a change in line, so they'll see that. So that's when we have to definitely fix. So some of these things that there might not be the best technique, but the judges won't see, like some of the things I mentioned about your roll during the wags, judges are probably not gonna notice that, but it's that's for you, for you to feel confident. But this is one they'll notice, so it needs to be fixed. Okay, now we're pulling, good pull, nice rotation, and good sticking to the line. Okay, now we have a quarter roll, looks good, and then three of four, one, two, three, and. Uh, definitely your your okay yeah your your line was good during the first two points but on the third as you came to inverted you could just see the nose come down and the and the angle change and then there's the view of the site that shows it's just not the same angle so your nose has come down you're shallow after the three of four but I don't think you were shallow until the very last point and now laying out inverted. Nose could be higher here. Inverted would probably have the nose a little higher. Perfectly inverted. Okay. And here's a roll. Now, there's there's an example of two things. One is I can definitely see the nose swinging in a way I wouldn't expect if you have good down elevator support. You have all this down elevator in to keep the plane inverted. Leave that in until you're almost upright. You need to leave some amount of it in. And uh, it depends on how the plane's trimmed. But just looking at the way your plane is flying, I think it's trimmed to to um, uh, for positive, you know, positive elevator. So you're going to need a down elevator throughout most of this roll from inverted to inverted. And it's a it's a, a varying amount, but it shouldn't be relaxed as much as I see. And that's why the nose is kind of moving around this circle. And then the other thing I see is the pull is uh, anticipated. So as you're finishing that roll, you're already letting the nose come down. Just make the roll perfect and then pull the nose down. Don't worry about, it could be a regional judging thing you're worried about. I do know in the Northwest, for example, some of the judges seem to like the roll to finish while the pull is beginning, but that's not what the rules indicate. The rules say we first roll, then pull. It does say, I think, without, I don't, I don't remember what exactly what it says, but it basically says they have to be, you know, one after the other. There can't be a break between them, can't be a line. But that doesn't mean that you have to do them at the same time either. So let's go ahead and get some separation between them, and then you can always tighten that up later. So here, we're just going back a little bit. So now we're going to have that roll. And here the nose is already down. The pull has basically begun. So that's what I was talking about there. Okay, now we have a four-point roll at the bottom. Now let's watch the, the point at which we're aiming at during this roll. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so at the end there, I definitely believe that there's need to be more down elevator on that from the three or four position to the four or four in that spot. So keep watching for that. Okay, pull to 45. A little soft in that pull. Half roll is good. Little shallow after the half roll again. You gotta watch for that. All looks pretty good there. One, two of eight. Good. Your little positive there. Just little tiny things. You know, you're gonna make mistakes like that. I certainly do as well. I'm just calling your attention to them. Oh, a little roll during the hammer. Let's see why that happened there. Because you fix that. 
Uh huh. Um, it looks like you just need more down elevator during the rotation, during the yaw rotation there. And you just didn't get, need more right aileron. Maybe you're out of aileron. Um, so what I tell people is that when you push that rudder in, you just lay the stick over, just lay it over. Like imagine you're just setting it there in your leg and then just walk the plane's nose down along the line. It looks like you're getting a little left roll as you're using your left rudder. So maybe you need the right aileron earlier. Maybe you don't have enough right aileron, but that's what I'm seeing is you're getting some, some left roll during the hammer. And that again is something I think people would see from the ground pretty easily, that correction. You, you're not gonna get away with that, so we need to have that fixed. Two of four, let's watch and see if we're, okay. Very short after there, but I think probably the nose was moving again. Make sure you stick that line and hold it. Okay, pull vertical, figure five here, and that should be a three of four. Look like the first point is a little short, but that's pretty good. And now push, and you're gonna be a little, it must be, so you're very slow there. So that's probably just need to be faster going into it. Practice um, when you are when you were short after before maybe, um, or maybe you need to be a little higher so you feel comfortable. That's fine too, but more energy going in always helps. The next thing is when you pull that line, if you have a three or four, man, you got to hit that right away. Pull, snag it back, do a nice crisp pull to the vertical, stop it. Um, this is where it really hurts you to be gentle at the end of that pull. It needs to be very, very crisp because it gives you more, more time. It gives you more distance, more speed with which to, to do your three or four. And then immediately hit that three or four. We'll go back and look at it here. Okay, we'll go back to this. Okay, so we're doing our two of four. And what we want to do is pull and just hold that rotation rate. That's not too bad, but now roll. And sometimes with the planes, it just doesn't have the, the vertical. And uh, maybe you don't have the airspeed. You just have to roll right away. Uh, you can't let yourself feel like you got settled. You have to be ready to go with the roll. And that's just why you're stalling out up here. Okay, now on your, on your 45 down, and you should have a half roll. This looks pretty good. And then a push. And here, um, I I notice your iPad is uh, it just scares me. I don't I don't you don't need an iPad to do aerobatics. Maybe you need it to get to where you're going, and you have a cross country. Okay, I understand. But uh, boy, I hate to see that sitting there. I'm afraid it's going to come off or just get, you know get wedged in somewhere that you wouldn't expect. Slide down your leg and interfere with the rudder pedal. It's just if there's if, unless you just absolutely have to have that. I don't think you should have anything in the cockpit that isn't completely nailed down. I mean, it really has to be very, very tight. And it's a matter of discipline. So I would recommend you get rid of that. I would just worry about you if that's in the cockpit with you. Okay. The push looks good. It looks a little soft. I mean, here I am sitting in my comfortable chair telling you that you need to push harder. And it's no fun. But but um, if you're going to, when you push, you just have to get the push in and keep it in and, and then let the, you know, let the forces build up and then relax it only when you reach your point. You can't get soft at the end. That happens a lot, but it looks a little soft at the end. Just try not to do that. It just scores better. It looks better. And it's the, the rules require a constant radius. So it's kind of what you have to do really. Even if that means you back off the amount of G's, the negative G's, instead of doing negative five, maybe you do negative four or negative three. Maybe that's a better compromise than pushing hard and then relaxing. Okay. Quarter roll, three quarter roll. That looks like the nose is swinging again down the elevator support. We covered that. Okay, on the, on the half loops, looks good. I just want to say the general idea here is just uh, tug the stick back and just leave it where it is. Don't float. I'm not saying you are floating. Just a general practice for people. We don't finesse half loops, not like a, a loop where we try and float them because what we want at the top is a lot of speed so we can do roll combinations. So pull the stick back, pop it, leave it there until we're at top. And that's basically how we do it. Now we have a one and a half roll. Okay, so there's definitely some rudder play at the very end there that, that shouldn't be needed if the roll was axial. So just keep thinking about that as you're working through with this. Do, I would say more roll drills, just three rolls, linked rolls. I recommend that a lot. And let's watch the snap here. Okay, so the snap is interesting because there are a couple things about the snap that I noticed. One of them is that um, I do not see the nose coming up and then yawing over. It should go up and then yaw over, at which point the rotation should begin. We call it auto rotation. But uh, there's sort of a step-by-step -step process that should happen in a snap roll. Nose up, nose over, auto rotation. I'm not really seeing that. I'm seeing more of an arc to the nose. The next thing is the nose is ending up high, 
after the snap. So what's hap what, the, the first problem is solved by um, changing your timing. When does the foot go in? Is it going in all the way? Probably needs to go in earlier. When does the aileron go in? Probably needs to go later. Um, how are you unloading? Probably needs to be unloaded more forward before you go to the aileron. I can't quite see your hands, but those are the things to start playing with. Just experiment. Do it wrong. Do it wrong this way, then do it wrong that way. It's okay. Go have some fun. Change the timing, but don't do it the same way every time because the way you're doing it isn't quite what I expect to see. So just try it different ways. Then the next thing is um, with the nose being high after the snap, well, when you if you were to do this um, uh, the, the expected way, you would load the airplane up. The rudder would go in at the same time or nearly the same time maybe slightly after, but let's say the same time is, is convenient. And then you would unload straight ahead and then hook over. Now you're in the, the snap. That's the basic mechanics for that. Okay, now we're in the snap. Now we want to end the snap. At that point, you need to release the, the rudder and the aileron, but not the unload, not right away. The unload is released after. So just as the stick goes back and then forward and hooks, it unhooks and comes back to center. If we take the stick, move it forward and hook, and then hook in the wrong way or hook at a diagonal, no hook, come back to a diagonal to the center position, then the, the nose will not be where we need it to be. We'll end up with uh, with the nose high because we pulled it high to begin with. We actually need a little down elevator to, to keep it down at the end. And um, to some extent, it all depends also on, um, on how the airplane just kind of flies, how it likes to do snap rolls, how... Um, how brisk you are with the inputs. You know, if you're, if you're yanking the nose up way too high, the nose will end up high afterwards also. So it could be something else, but I think that's the thing to try is just the timing and the depth of which you're unloading. I think it looks like you might not be unloading forward very much. You might be pulling the stick back and then just kind of slamming it over to the side. That is um, gonna get you something that looks a lot like a snap from the ground, but it's not exactly what we, what we need, not the inputs we need to have a real snap roll. Uh, I, I do know when I when I first started snapping, I had a coach tell me to just to do that, and it wasn't bad advice. Just pull the stick back and then rudder and aileron at the same time, and that's basically how, how you snap. Well, that's not a bad way to go at the beginning because it'll probably score almost all the time, but it's not what we need to do. We need to, at advance, we need to start doing more than that. We should always do more than that, but, you know, once you're past the training wheel stage, I mean. Okay, great. So otherwise, good stuff there. Um and now here with the, the iPad. So yeah, you, you just see, it's it's so common. People have stuff in the cockpit that they're fighting with. It just, this is hard enough. Just get it all out of there. No, enough said. Okay, pull in vertical. Very soft pull, but you're not going very fast. Just remember the technique is to, uh, still to snatch a stick back just to a lower G level so the, so the airplane can carve. Hammerhead, and now one and a quarter roll. The one and quarter roll looks a little slow. I can't, I don't know if maybe you're using full aileron, but make sure that you are. Make sure the stick is always moving very quickly back and forth. And again, short after, almost no line after at all on this here, in fact. Let's just watch that again. Well, there is a line after, it's just I'm, I'm seeing the, the nose drift, so it's the same issues before. So there might be enough line after. Okay, oh, lay down Humpties. Now these are interesting for advanced pilots. The, the, one of the tricks about these is that you can draw these lines a lot longer than people think. Very hard to judge that snap. I'm gonna let that one go. And push. Okay, this is this looks good. What, um, what you can do with these, I'm just gonna pause it. What you can do with these a lot of times is draw that first line out and then just go ahead and chop the throttle as you're starting to push and then bring the throttle back in when you get about here. That can make the that push look a lot tighter. I don't know if you needed to, it looks like you did pretty well, but what you don't wanna have someone do, which happens a lot, is to get up there, still be moving really, really fast, and carve a really, really big push humpty at the top, and it doesn't look um, round, it doesn't look centered, because they get going faster and faster and faster, and then the Gs build up, and they, they start getting you know um, upset over it, and they, they relax. That looks pretty good, but, you, but if you want to, you could try drawing that line even longer, and then chop the throttle and try to make a real tight radius on top. If you don't bring the throttle back in, you'll probably stall. So you got to add the throttle back in at the right moment. Just experiment. Now we have a two of four. Okay, it's still the nose drifting. After the two of four, I still see the nose. Just a just 
to show you, a little hard to, to show here, but if I stop it, this is how much space there's between this line and the nose right now. And we're, we're just kind of just rounding from there all the way into the level line. Just, just stay on that line. Just enjoy that line for another second without letting the nose move. Okay. Figure nine will be next. Two of two. Yeah, it's another one where I can see the nose swing because there's not enough down elevator support. I know I've said it, but that's really a theme, so let's keep with it. Half roll. Now we've got one and a half snaps. We get to see another snap. Okay, yeah. This 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 is this is just really telling that uh this time for sure I can see the the, the plane just just the nose moves up and begins a rotation at the same time. Yeah, that's just not really a snap. It might look like a snap enough from the ground, but it really needs to be a load with the rudder, unload, and that will give you the snap you're looking for. You're close to it. You have you have all the things. You're doing um you you have you have all the difficulty of doing a snap. Uh, I'm sure it is a snap by the time it gets developed, by the way. I'm not saying it's not a snap. But everything you're doing is correct. It's just that the timing needs to be broken out a little bit differently so that will give that characteristic of the nose coming up and the auto rotation beginning. And it'll it'll actually I think rotate faster if you if you really hit it. It could be the rudder's not in all the way. It's hard to tell from this view. I'm gonna watch again here. Very hard to tell. Very hard to tell. Looks like it's a snap, uh, just not developed right away. It looks like it starts as a roll. Okay, now we're gonna have one and a half inside rolls on a 180. And um, looks pretty good. Definitely a um, change in turn rate, change in roll rate. A couple times in here, finished up with a lot of roll at the end. Hey, that looks like one of my rollers. So maybe not too bad. I should give you a 10 because that's what I would want to get. Um, that, that's that's pretty good. You can you can keep working on the rollers. They're just tough. Um, what I think the, the, the thing there is just keep noticing when you feel like the roller, like the... Um, uh, like, like you're fighting yourself. Like you know that the plane should be rolling a little faster than it is, but you know that it's not doing that because the rudder changed and now you're fighting the roll. And you know you just do it over and over again, and eventually you kind of realize how much aileron to feed in and feed out based on where the rudder is going, because it's it's helping you than fighting you as you're changing it. And then also make sure that you're that you're getting to um, depending on your airspeed, you can probably get the full rudder if you're fast enough. If you're slow, you can't. You'll snap. But if you're fast enough, you probably probably should be able to get to full rudder and then going to full rudder the other side and then full rudder and and you'll you'll actually need a, a lot of force to get to full rudder. Um, so you just have to kind of just get used to just really pushing and and getting the plane to where it's doing what you really need it to do to keep the turn going. The turn every time you're right set up or upside down, there's a moment, a brief moment where the the turn is happening only because of rudder, and that's usually where this the, the problems come in. And if you think about it, the rate at which you can turn is sort of dependent on how much you can turn with just rudder. So one way you could kind of play with that is to go out and just do rudder turns, rudder only. Use the, you need opposite aileron to keep the, the plane flat, but just do flat rudder turns. And it'll, that'll give you a feel for how much uh, turn rate you can get, and that'll kind of set up for how much you should, um, how, how much turn you should expect, the rate of turn, to have a balanced roller. Now, the reality is that's not probably a tight enough turn radius with just rudder, and probably what you need to do in real life is is um, cheat and get a little more turn going when you have the when your knife edge and you're pulling and pushing, and kind of make up for the parts when you're doing just rudder, where it won't turn as much. You probably need to compromise, but it's still the best starting place, and I think going out and doing larger rollers is not a bad way to get yourself ready for smaller, tighter rollers. It just gets harder when they're smaller. So that's my advice on the roller. Hey, overall, really good flying. I think you're doing great. Uh, there's just a couple little themes here. And just kind of recap, obviously the rolls, do do roll drills. Uh, make sure you give the down elevator support that you need. That's, I think, one of the bigger things. Um, on the lines, the mostly the, down, the line's down. I see a lot of creep in the line. So just stick the line, enjoy it, and kind of maybe shoot for long afters instead of short afters for a bit because you have a tendency to be short after. So go ahead and aim for long afters and just you know get used to what it's like to hold that line. If that means you have to move the whole sequence up so you have um, time and altitude to go down more, that's okay. Do that because you're not trying to fly low. You're trying to fly good lines. 
And then uh, the other things uh, are snap rolls. That's probably the other kind of theme where I just don't know. I haven't flown a cap, so I don't know what it would feel exactly like. From looking at it from your perspective, I'm not seeing the separation I expect. And I think it's just you're doing all the controls. You're just not doing enough of them at the right time. You just have to play with it. So those are kind of the three big takeaways. And I think uh, just enjoy the heck out of it. You're doing a great job. Okay, great. Hey, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. I will be doing another one here maybe later on today. I don't know. Maybe soon. I have several queued up. Very good to see you all. Thank you so much. Until next time, bye-bye.